Hey everyone, good morning. It's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com. I'm in Kyoto, Japan. Ying and I are on our way to the train station. We are gonna head into Kyoto and today we're gonna try to do some sightseeing around town. We are at Momo Yamagorime Station, waiting for our train and we're gonna head straight to Kyoto Station from here. I think that's our train. Made it to Kyoto Station, we're gonna transfer to a different train and head to uh, a station called Arashiyama, Saga Arashiyama. In and around Kyoto, there are almost an overwhelming amount of sightseeing and attractions and temples and shrines, uh, and so it can be a little overwhelming to research everything, and so you kind of just got to pick and choose the ones that really look, uh, stand out, that you want to visit. And so Ying and I decided we wanted to really check out the bamboo forest, and so we just arrived at Saga Arashiyama Station, and unfortunately, uh, it started to rain pretty heavily and it's raining right now, but it should be about a 15 minute walk from this station to get to uh, the bamboo forest as well as another temple and a couple of shrines in this area. So that's what we're going to do now. We were walking on our way to the temple and the bamboo forest, but unfortunately the rain just kept getting harder and so we had to do what we do best and stop in to eat. We are at a restaurant that specializes in tofu and different egg dishes. And this is a, a restaurant right across the street from the Tenruji Temple. And so we're gonna stop in here, have lunch, and I hope the rain will start to clear up at least a little bit after we finish lunch. They have a bunch of different sets. I think I'm gonna go for this set, the Nonomiya set. It's a little bit expensive, but it has a lot of a lot of little dishes. My set meal has arrived, and this is just a beautiful platter and presentation. There must be like at least 10 different little dishes on this platter. This is my bowl of rice, and then it looks like in back of the rice are a few little toppings. There are some green onions and some um, little pickles. This is some kind of a sauce, and then over there, that looks like some kind of a, it looks like pudding actually, but it could be some kind of an egg dish. And then this, what's in here? That looks like a little deep fried something. And then over here, what I'm really interested in is served in a bamboo uh, pole. And I believe that is the, the thick skin of tofu. So you can kind of see that, that skin in there, I believe. And then it's topped with green onions and a carrot. And then one of my main dishes on my platter is this tofu, which is, which is sitting on a hot burner. And let's take a look inside. Oh, that's steaming hot. But it, that looks like a big block of some kind of tofu in soup with a few small vegetables in it. And yeah, this one just looks the most interesting to me. That, look, that looks very creamy and very, very milky. Okay, I'll take some of this and then she told me that I should use this sauce right here. She just sort of uh, motioned for me how to eat it, but I think you're supposed to then kind of dip into this sauce and get a little bit of that sauce going in there. Okay, that should be good. Before I start eating, I just want to tell you that I really have no idea exactly what I'm doing or how I'm supposed to eat this, so I'm just gonna do my best and I think I'm gonna enjoy it. Mm. Oh wow, it tastes like, yeah, like bean curd skin. Um, it's kind of tofu tasting in flavor, but it has more of a, like a, a skinny texture to it. Time for the main tofu dish. Oh, that's still steaming hot. <laughs> and even on my platter, there are a bunch of different utensils. All of them have a purpose for something but I'm not sure exactly what for. I think this one will work well to scoop out. Oh, that might work well to scoop out a piece of tofu because it's so delicate. Let's do tofu. Whoa, 
Oh, that's wobbly. That is wobbly. I hope it doesn't wobble off this little mesh spoon, but I'll, I'll transfer this over to my rice bowl. Okay, this is another sauce in a bowl, and these are little toppings. I think I'll just add it all to the sauce. Looks like ginger and green onions. And then I think I'll just add some of this to the piece of tofu. And let me go in with my chopsticks. Oh, I better get that, that thing as well. That is just extremely delicate in flavor. Uh, it tastes like just normal tofu, but it's very, it's kind of almost milder. And I think it's also about the texture, which is just extremely silky smooth and really just melts in your mouth and just falls apart. Okay, next I'll taste this, which looks very custardy. Oh, and I hit something. I hit something in the bottom there. Oh yeah, you can see there's something in the bottom. Oh, that, that looks like, that looks like flan. Oh wow, I think that's egg. That's like, that just literally falls apart. I didn't even need to chew on that and it just slid down my throat. Next, I'm going for this one. Mm. That's very juicy. That also tastes like tofu, but it tastes like it's been just filled with broth and brine. This one, I believe, is the soup. Oh, if I can get the lid off. Oh, and look at these. Look at these fish balls. They have like a, they have some neon colored veins running through them. I think that's not a fish ball, but I think that's kind of, it's kind of tastes like, uh, like batter ball. I finished off my entire tray of food and now down to just dessert. And this is, yeah, it, it looks like very uh, wobbly something and then topped with a very fine, fine brownish powder. I don't know if I should cut. I'll probably just eat the whole thing in one bite. Mm. It has a very nutty flavor to it, and it is extremely soft. That's almost like a gummy worm, except that it disintegrates like 10 times faster so you just chew a little bit and all of a sudden it just starts dissolving in your mouth and then it has a very nutty flavor to it as well and it's it is a little bit sweet but that is it's it's it really it really glorifies that texture we just finished eating and i think we just ate a vegetarian meal if i'm not mistaken apart from perhaps some eggs in that food everything was on the plain side uh, nothing was overly, overly strong in flavor, but everything was very, very high quality, very well made, and really focused on simplicity as well as uh, just presentation, I think. So overall, not fully my style of a meal because it was a little on the plain side, but I really did appreciate the ambience of the restaurant and the presentation and the whole experience of eating there. As we were eating, the rain did slow down a little bit. It's still sprinkling, but this is a lot more manageable than it was before. So I think we're gonna head off and go to the temple as well as the bamboo forest now. I just entered the Tenruji temple and it cost 500 yen for entrance, but this temple was originally established in 1339, although they said it has burnt down and been ravaged by fires a number of times and has been rebuilt. But along with the temple, in the back they are supposed to have one of the oldest surviving Japanese gardens, and that's what I'm interested in seeing. I had to make the clear umbrella investment as the rain just refuses to stop, keeps on raining. But around Japan when it rains, you'll see a lot of people using these clear see-through umbrellas. And actually, they're pretty convenient because it doesn't block your vision. We are now heading towards the famous path of bamboo.
we have arrived to the Nonomiya Shrine. So just gonna take a quick look in here. Check out that snail crawling up the side of the pole of bamboo. The rain has finally started to stop. It's still drizzling just a little bit, but the sun is coming out, so looking better. We walked out of the bamboo forest, and now we're walking down the street. There are lots of little snack stores. I think this area is very well known for their uh, Japanese desserts. And so you'll find a lot of little snack, tea, and dessert stores. Uh, but we're walking down the street and gonna check out a famous bridge. I am on the bridge now and I just read on the sign back at the front of the bridge. It says this bridge has a thousand years of history in Japan. Uh, so this is not the original bridge, but it has been in this place for over a thousand years and yeah the water is rushing and it is very clear and looks pretty cold we walked around for a little bit and we just jumped in line at the bus station we're gonna try to take a bus to one station and then we have to transfer to a different bus and then try to catch it to another famous kyoto temple right now we are here in the arashiyama area at arashiyama tenruji station we will try to take bus number 11 to this station, then transfer to that pink line and take bus number 59 all the way up to Kinkakujime. The two bus rides went smoothly. We got dropped off just a little walk from King Kakuji, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> we got dropped off just a block from King Kakuji Temple, which is where we're headed next. Just got our tickets. It is 400 yen for entrance, and now entering into the temple complex. <laughs> Okay, we made it to the Kinkakuji Temple and there are thousands of people here. It is extremely busy, but the most famous sight to see at this temple is the pond with the golden pavilion right behind me. And it is quite a beautiful sight, but it is, there are a lot, a lot and a lot of people here. Overall, it was a really beautiful sight. The pond, especially with the Golden Pavilion, is the highlight of visiting, but it was intensely crowded and busy. The, the entire, walking through the entire garden was just single file with a, a huge crowd. So this might be a great temple to visit on an off-peak hour, maybe early in the morning when it's not so busy. It would be really nice to visit, uh, but still, it was a very beautiful sight. We just got into bus number 205 and we are heading back to Kyoto Station. We made it back to our train station and then we were just gonna go into a supermarket to pick up a, small, a few small things like some fruit and I needed to buy some coffee. But while we were in the supermarket, I was tempted by all of the little pre-cooked food items and so we decided to make that dinner and I chose a bunch of little items. They are in my bag right now and I am hungry for dinner. We're gonna go back to our hotel and we're gonna eat everything we just bought. Over here I believe that's some kind of meatballs and then over here this is some grilled fish, perhaps mackerel. 
Then for vegetables, I got a selection of different kimchi. There's cabbage, there's cucumber, and looks like daikon. I'm really feeling the need to eat some protein, so I got another fish. And then over here, it looks like a hamburger topped with cheese and gravy. And then finally, I got a rice ball just to top off everything. I'm very curious to try this hamburger, which looks like it's topped with some cheese. And then the more I, as I dug into this, it looks like there's potatoes on top of it and then brown gravy all over the top. So maybe this is like a, a hamburger all in one, but without a bun and there's like potato salad on top of it. Let me break into that and okay. Oh, will it come out? There we go. Oh yeah, look, look. Let me try to get a bit of that. That's like a, that's like a hamburger lasagna, it looks like. And all they had at the hostel are these cooking chopsticks. So they had no personal chopsticks, so I have to use the cooking chopsticks for eating, which I don't mind at all. Mmm. That kind of tastes like meatloaf. Japanese meatloaf, but with potato, salad on top, and then a layer of cheese, and then brown gravy. I think this is mackerel. Oh, yes. Oh, fish. Mmm. Yeah. I love fish. I love mackerel. This tastes like it's salt cured, and then maybe just roasted, or maybe grilled, but yeah. I could eat that all day and that fish is nice and salty, I gotta chase it with my rice ball. Japanese rice is so good, and they take care in cooking it perfectly. And then this one is mixed with bits of seaweed and sesame seeds. And I think these must be minced chicken because of the color, or pork. Mmm, it might be like egg mixed with chicken because they're very, it's almost like an omelet in texture. Very kind of soft. Mmm, mmm. The kimchi is a little bit on the sweet side. Finished with dinner, that was a good meal. You don't necessarily pay less for a meal when you eat pre-cooked food like that from the supermarket, uh, as opposed to eating out at a restaurant, but I think you do get a lot more protein for your amount of money, like what I just ate there. And also, it's really fun to walk around the supermarkets in Japan. They have so much of a selection of different things to try, all of which are extremely tempting. Uh, and yeah, that was a very satisfying meal. I'm gonna end the vlog for today here. Thank you all very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And I will see you tomorrow for the next video, and we are heading back to Osaka.